Hey, it's Alan Tudyk. You are listening to the Magic Hour Way podcast with Kevin, Danny, Eli, and Rachel. Jumbo, everyone. Harambe. And welcome to another edition of the Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. The Magic Our Way podcast. They are truly magical and whatnot. Sana, everyone. You're listening to the Magic Army Podcast from New Orleans, Louisiana. And on this show, we invite you to feel the libations. Feel it, feel it. We are artistic buffs talking about dizzy stuff, and this is a show in which every opinion is welcome. MagicArmy.com is where you can find us. Welcome to episode 501, the first episode in the next 100 series, mm. of course. And for this show, we discuss Wish, the Walt Disney Animation Studio offering for the 2023 holiday season. And look, this isn't your typical polished practice Pixie Dust and Dizzy podcast. No way. We are not in the parks every day telling you about Figment's Christmas sweater that is being worn for the 2023 Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. That's right, Kev. We're just here to drink, talk some Disney, and grant some wishes. Ooh, you guys got the easy part. All you got to do is listen up while you hear what we think up, what we're drinking up. My name is Kevin. And I'm Danny. I'm Eli. And I'm Rachel. Man, you know, that sounded like Oprah when you said that. Grant some wishes. Wishes. No, you get a wish. You get a wish. You get a wish. I'm, I was doing Genie from Wishes. Oh, yeah. That one's good, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wishes. And so, look, guys, man, we got a lot to talk about this movie. So enough of our jibber jabber. It's time to discuss Wish. <laughs> Welcome to the Hub, our main topic segment of the show. And for this Hub, it's time for a movie review. Yeah. Woo-woo. Yee. We discuss Wish, the Walt Disney Animation Studio offering for the 2023 holiday season, whose official date of release in the United States was on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. And the Disney official website describes a movie like so, and I quote, In Wish, Asha, a sharp-witted idealist, makes a wish so powerful that is answered by a cosmic force, a little ball of boundless energy called Star. Together, Asha and Star confront a most formidable foe, the ruler of Rosas, King Magnifico, to save her community and prove that when the will of one courageous human connects with the magic of the stars, wondrous things can happen, end quote. And of course, we present our review in two parts, non-spoiler as well as spoiler-filled, and we will give you ample warning before going into the spoiled filled part. So that's <laughs> it. So you can at least listen to the first half of our show. Yes. If you haven't seen the movie yet and get an idea of whether or not you want to see this movie. So let us begin with the non-spoiler part. Who would like to lead off? Ooh, that's mm. a good one. Who wants to start this fire? Oh, we uh, I guess I, I could I'll go. All um, right. Eli, mm. Stepping up. Yeah. Okay. Well, for one thing. I wish the animation was a little bit better. It was kind of flat. That's the one thing that stuck out to me the most. Hmm. Mainly the backgrounds and stuff. But yeah. the story in itself, I think the concept was good. Like, it's a good concept and thought. But the way it pulled it off, I, I couldn't make it through the first half of the movie. I, I'm being totally honest. I I wish I could have stayed awake through the first half. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I could I, I could I could do it. The theater I was at, there was a handful of people. No one laughed. No one mm. no mm. one said, "Oh, that was good." Oh, th-. just nothing. Like it was just kind of flat. I dug the villain, but only towards the latter half of the movie. Like that's pretty much my favorite parts are the latter half of the movie. Okay. But yeah, overall, I mean, it, I don't know if this makes sense, but it was like it checked the Disney movie prerequisites right mm-hmm. like diverse heroin strange character talking animals weird sidekicks yeah magic magic powerful villain like it checked all those boxes but i didn't have any disney feels on it that that's my overall impression okay. of it all 100 check boxes did it, did it check yeah that was yeah i mean it had some <laughs> the good disney 100, disney 100 yeah, check it, boxes, that's yeah. a good point it had some good callbacks to it as well that was cute okay okay cool well 
So this is a movie that I found myself really looking forward to because, as you put it, Eli, it was more of a return to the traditional Disney story, a magical land, far away, more traditional Disney villain music, etc. And I thought the concept sounded really original, and I was kind of intrigued as to where they were gonna, what they were going to do with it. Kind of what you were saying about the animation, I heard people complaining about how the animation looked unfinished, but I kind of thought that Disney was going for a blend of the traditional hand-drawn animation of the past with the computer animation of today. So I thought it was more of a stylistic choice. Okay. Uh, as opposed yeah. to like, yeah, they just did it on the cheap or something. Um, so stylistically, I applaud the effort. Now, does it look wonky at times? Yes, it does. Sometimes I'm watching a thing and I thought I was looking at it through the comic book filter on my iPhone camera. You know, it just it felt like it was just a little bit off at times. But for the most part, I don't really have a problem with that because I, I think I see what they were going for. However, overall, yeah, it was a it was a disappointment to me. This is probably the first time I've ever seen a movie, let alone a Disney movie, where at one point I found myself nodding off and that was after drinking a two gallon Coke Icy. So it happened to you too. <laughs> yes. And okay. At, so, but I didn't fall asleep. I just felt myself going. And I don't know, man. The plot just made very little sense. The villain was so over the top and quick to flash his more menacing side that you wonder how no one, let alone his wife, spotted long ago this dude might be in need of a rubber room at the puzzle factory. <laughs> <laughs> the music was bland. Uh, it, it, man, I missed the contributions of Lynn manuel Miranda watching this movie. Yeah. And Chris Pine singing makes me pine for the rock. <laughs> 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 he makes the rock look like Justin Timberlake, I thought, in this one. The side characters were all uninteresting. Not one single joke that I can think of landed. Like Eli said, the theater was quiet. And there was a good amount of people in there. It wasn't a smattering. There was a good amount of people. It was just bland, colorless, tasteless, odorless, joyless mess of a movie. And I don't know, man. It's not to say that it was terrible because it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't all that stimulating, engaging, or satisfying in any way. I mean, it doesn't stay with you. I, I forgot about it the minute we walked out. <laughs> I had to, like, when I was sitting there trying to put together my thoughts for the movie, I had to try and really remember what was going on. And I can see some people maybe saying, well, look, dude, you're a 40-year-old adult. This movie wasn't made for you. But I took a 13-year-old girl and a 10-year-old girl to see this movie. And when it was over, the 10-year-old turned to my daughter, the 13-year-old, and said, I told you we should have seen Charles 3. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> the most fun they had in the movie was during the credits picking out the little characters, you know, that they would show in the sparkles. Yeah. Right. The and circles, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it really felt like it was going to be something special, and it fell way, way, way short of that mark. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, well, I think I'm going to be a little bit more positive than oh, you guys were. Good. Uh, but it's good to have diversity of takes. Yeah. I, like, Googled on my phone as soon as it started uh, about the animation, because I also noticed that it looked different than what I was used to, and I learned that about 80% of the animation was hand-drawn in, like, watercolors. Nice. Oh, cool. So I thought that was cool. Like, yes. to, it's a definitely a nod back to their roots. I thought that was pretty cool. I liked the villain. I liked the main character. I liked the supporting characters. I thought all the characters were good. None of them are going to make my favorite character ever list. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I, you know, I've got a handful of characters, Disney characters that I really love. None of them made that list today. So, I i mean, I can see where you're coming from there. Mm -hmm. I do think that overall, for me, the movie did a really nice job of reminding me what the mission of the company was and maybe Walt's mission a little bit. Sure. And I don't know that that's what you want to make a movie for. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know that that's like a great movie goal but if that was the goal to truly celebrate disney's 100 as a company mm -hmm. um and to nod back to walt and to nod back to their roots i thought this did a good job okay i also am going to be a tiny bit biased jennifer lee was the writer on this and she also was the writer of frozen mm -hmm. she's also from my college that i went to the university of new hampshire she graduated from there and i've watched yeah i've watched a couple of documentaries about her and i just think she's like one of the coolest 
women out there, especially women in high power positions in large corporations. So awesome. I'm always going to like be rooting for her. Sure. I can hear, I'm excited to get to the spoiler part where we can talk about more of the specifics, but I would say overall, I liked it. It certainly didn't make my top five list. Probably didn't even make my top 10. If you had to give it a grade, like one to 10, is this too early to do that? Oh, we no, do that. Like, yeah. well, well, I don't know. Maybe it is too early. We could, uh, we will decide it after I'll just so you can give you my number. I was thinking like for me, Frozen 2 is my very favorite. Okay. So if I'm giving Frozen 2 like a 9 out of 10, this was like a 6 for me. Wow. Mm, Can I tell you something? Kevin predicted that would be your grade. Oh, yeah. A 6? Yeah, I would give it a 6. We were all Uh, talking before. I was like, what do y'all predict their grade? Because we try not to talk about the movie before we see it, so we don't know. Although I could tell by the looks on their faces when they walked in <laughs> what the grade was going to be. Yeah. So we were, we were trying to predict it, and Kevin called it. He said that you would That's say a six. six. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was a six for me. Okay. Um, I will say you you talked about your kids there. I took my kids, um, and also I took Josh. So I, I have kind of a range of opinions in terms of like a dad and a young boy. My son is almost seven, and my daughter is almost 12. Okay. Both my kids really liked it. Awesome. Again, they also said that it didn't make like their top five, mm. but okay. they yeah. really enjoyed it. And the first thing or one of the first things I said in the car was, well, I didn't really love the music so much. And then I said, well, except for that, like the big song, like the epic song, I did like that. Mm-hmm. And I could see myself like really enjoying that in a fireworks show. Mm-hmm. And so we put that song on in the car and then we started to let the soundtrack play. And I was like, I like it better not in the movie. Like that's <laughs> weird, right? Like the songs are better on the soundtrack for me at least than they were in the movie. Like in the movie I thought some of them were like cringy. Yes. Yes, very yes. cringy. But afterwards when I was listening to them on the soundtrack I was like, "Oh, this is better than I remember. I mm-hmm. actually enjoy this." <laughs> so I don't know. So there's that. I need to go back and listen because there was one song that at first I'm like, eh, and then it kind of grew on me a little bit, but most of them never grew on me while watching the film. Yeah. Same. Right. Yeah, I agree. I was, the, I was with you. I was like, did Lynn Manuel Miranda do this? And I Googled it and he did not. And right. so I was like, yeah, you can tell yep. it's not that good. <laughs> yeah. No, but you could tell. Get what you sh- paid for. <laughs> yeah. You could tell there were sh- the people that wrote the music had strives to kind of make it that way. Yeah. Yes. It like almost it. sounded like him, but it wasn't. It was like right. the Walmart version. Yeah. No, no. Exa- yeah. Walmart Miranda. <laughs> President's own. <laughs> President's choice, I mean. Yeah. Ma- members this mark. Close. Good try, guys. Oh, Good try. It was like yeah. Chat GPT. Write me a song inspired by Lin Manuel Min- yes, Miranda. Exactly. Nice. Yes. It was like, oh, this is close. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Kevin. Go. All right. Yes. So let me preface this by saying that I had done zero research on this movie before I watched it. No reviews, no videos, no podcasts, no nothing. No, not even a reading on social media, because uh, it just wasn't on my radar until mm-hmm. you and Danny you text is like, "Oh, we can review this." I was like, "Oh, I forgot this was coming out." It seemed like an important movie to review. Yeah, so, yeah I, I wanted to do. I, I, I was looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, and I, I think I even reacted the way I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot this was coming out." Yeah, <laughs> so it just was. So thankfully, all that in place. I, I went into it with with almost no expectations. I didn't know what to expect. Plus, you know, the only thing I really did see is just the ads for it, mm-hmm. which just kept on playing all day yeah. during Thanksgiving Day football. So during the course of me watching this movie, um, I had this movie actually rated much lower than where I have it rated now. You know, oh, I, really? I, I, yeah. And the reason being is that, to y'all's point, the music wasn't the greatest to me. There, there, it wasn't anything that really grabbed me. It was, it was, um, it just kind of goes to my feelings about the storyline. It felt very, the storyline felt very formulaic mm-hmm. and the music had straps to be in the same kind of formula. You can almost kind of see the beats as far as, okay, this person's going to sing a tune. This person's going to sing a tune. Oh, they're starting to rally to get together. Oh, they're going to sing mm-hmm. or something. And then they went to a Ghostbusters 2 ending, but we'll talk about that in the spoilers. <laughs> But honestly, and yeah, and also too, it was much lower because I had actually dozed off a couple of times for a quick sec. I was out. You got you too, huh? Yeah, no, like and this was especially during the songs too. It was like you people start need singing. to get better sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I probably need to get better sleep, but yeah, no, it was just and you know the itis from Thanksgiving. Maybe that didn't help either. Yeah, but maybe, yeah, yeah. I, it didn't. But that just goes to say that it just didn't really engage me as much right off the bat. Mm-hmm. People would say, well, maybe the movie wasn't made for you. And I'll argue, we know Walt tried to make movies for the entire family. Mm. <laughs> you know, so yeah. uh, that, that's yeah, a definite thing that you hear him say all the time. 
there's a clip somewhere where he says like, yeah, you know, the parents have the money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where it is. It's true. Yeah, but you know, as we watched the show, and I went with me and my three daughters. My wife wasn't feeling well, so she stayed home. But it was just me and my three daughters. Uh, you know, my kids started noting noting the little homages mm-hmm. of previous Disney movies throughout that. Yeah, and it's with this realization that my rating actually went up, mm-hmm. but not by a lot. Okay. okay. I can't say I was blown away by this movie, but I might say I didn't enjoy this one as much as any of the other movies that Walt Disney Animation has released. However, Alan Tudyk's decisions on how he portrayed his particular character, which is the goat, you can find that out pretty easily, so it's not uh, uh, um, a spoiler thing, Mm -hmm. um, saved it a little bit for me. I I liked Valentino. I would buy a stuffed Valentino. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm sure they're going to sell stuffed stars and whatever dolls or whatever else. But I would buy a little goat and just hang him on my little recording station just to hang out because I thought that, that, that was fun. Okay. Plus, you know, what they were doing, as you could tell, and this kind of helped raise the rating just a little bit, was that it was some kind of all-encompassing thing for the Disney 100 celebration. There were homages everywhere, left and right, of previous movies, little cameo things here. You know, you had the... I, I, I can't say it right now because it'll be spoilers and stuff. But I think once I realized that and my kids pointed it out, then I got a little more engaged. It's kind of okay. like the Hidden Mickey thing. It was like, oh, okay, yes. now i got to find this, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, so there were a lot of those. Now I'm engaged with the movie. But not for the story, <laughs> not for the original story of the movie, but more for watching out to those homages, which to what I think are better movies. <laughs> you know, they're, they're homaging better movies in their stable than uh, what, what, what we're actually given. So actually, out of a scale of one to ten, uh, with ten being the best, I'm put, I put this movie at about a four for me, which is usually pretty uh, much lower than where I usually give. I'm usually more on the, the more positive side. But mm-hmm. man, I just I, I don't know. I just it, I wasn't feeling it. I mean, definitely go see this movie, but go see how many of the homages to the previous Walt Disney animation movies yeah. you can find. The story, like I said, is kind of meh for me, and get, probably the most likely, if I watch it again, the next time I watch it will be on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that I'm going to watch it again, but I might. Um, so that, in and of itself, has me at around a four as well. Yeah. Yeah, to your point, Kevin, I guess the, the callbacks, it, it helped make it fun, but yeah, it definitely detracted from the movie and, and y'all mentioned the kids I, I watched it with my three girls and oh. so the oldest liked it she enjoyed it she liked it she said i asked her why and she's like she liked the characters and stuff whatever mm-hmm. else um i did hear a laugh at one particular part that the goat said so that, that's the one a, oh, oh the yeah. my kids loved when he talked about his butt <laughs> yeah. Anytime butt. the goat talked about his butt, my kids were pumped. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the butt thing. I'm usually down for butt jokes. He felt like, like he rubbed jokes. his butt and he oh broke he over. Broke, yeah, oh that's right. He like rubbed yeah, his butt yeah. on something. Yeah. And, and, and it opened up a yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, but there's actually something else where I actually kind of chuckled just a uh, little bit. But that was the yeah. only time I chuckled. To y'all's point, yeah, I really didn't laugh as much. A mm-hmm. um, middle child. I mean, actually, let me preface it. But they all said it was boring. But my oldest liked it. Um, my middle child was like, eh, it, it was boring, but then it got better toward the end when all the action took place. Okay. I was like, okay, that's fair. I can yeah, see I that. can I, see that. I, I was a little more engaged. But I think that was post-realizing that they were doing Dizzy 100 and you're homaging all these movies. So I was mm-hmm. watching for that, but then also the action picked up. So I was like, okay, this is this is cool now. I, I, I can kind of dig with this. And the youngest liked it, and I asked her why, and she had no reason. So I was like, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cool, Dad. I was like, well, yeah. No, it was like one of those, did you like it? It's like, yeah. What'd you like about it? I don't know. Stop asking me questions so I can go back on my phone. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That's all she did. But yeah, y'all talked about animation and y'all talked about the way to look and stuff. And it's really cool to learn about, you know, how they're incorporating some of the hand-drawn stuff. But to me, uh, I, I was going to ask you guys a question since you, y'all are the visual artists. The movement of the characters was a little off for me. It felt very DreamWorks. <laughs> Like the reactions that the characters were given were just so over the top, over like DreamWorksy over the top versus what Dizzy would normally do, which is something that's a, a, maybe a little more natural. Yeah, sure, sometimes Dizzy would go for the over-the-top thing, mm-hmm. but it, it felt a little more smooth. And some of these were just like, blah, you know, like bug-eye kind of kind of things. And the movements were kind of uh, almost over-exaggerated, I felt. With the sidekicks, I, I can see your point there because they mm-hmm. were kind of clunky. And there was, there was one scene specifically that uh, I know we'll get into it, but mm-hmm. I was like, I, for a second, I was like, I'm done. I don't really, I can't, I can't check this out right now. So with the star in the barn, that, that was like, that's too much. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but there was some parts where like the frames, when they would do something magical, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be smooth. Like, you know, in the old school ones, mm-hmm. you know, like they have the pixie dust or whatever, and then it goes over an item that 
bling, it turns into whatever. And this one, it was kind of like a frame was missing almost whenever something would transition. I can so, see that, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Even with the the old hand-drawn stuff when they do stuff like that, to your point, I mean, it was seamless, you know, because I think the attention to detail that those old animators had mm-hmm. were just impeccable. Where It's like, you know, if you needed an extra frame here, they probably drew it. And then it made the movements much smoother, much better. You know, it's transitioned to today with the computer stuff. I know some of this stuff just felt, it seemed really jarring to me when I was watching it. I didn't quite notice that, I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I thought that maybe a lot of the characters in the, was it the island of Rosa, Rosas? Rosas. 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 I th- yeah. yeah, I thought they were dressed similar to like Shrek. Like I, I yeah, felt like yeah. it, mm-hmm. it felt like a lot of characters mm-hmm. from Shrek. Yeah. I will say that, the villain was way more animated than the regular characters. Like mm-hmm. he is, it was like his face changed and like snarled up like the wolf and in, in like in any Looney Tunes yeah. uh, movie. Like yeah, he really, when he got evil, like he went full born like crazy looking evil. Oh, so you he know, was very yeah. animated. To that point, I, what I love is the colors that they use, which are like the traditional mm-hmm. greens yes. and purples. Yes. I didn't enjoy that. Well. I was like, yeah. oh, look at them go, mm-hmm. going back to the, the, the roots with all that, you know? Yeah. Have you guys watched. And I'm going to guess probably not because I don't know why you would. A lot of the Disney Channel stuff they've been doing. So like Elena of Avalor. This is a couple years back, mm-hmm. but Elena of Avalor and like the Sophia, Sophia the First. The first yeah, yeah. And, I've seen Sophia um, the First, yeah. The Rapunzel Tangled yep. like series on Disney Channel. Yep. Oh, yeah, my, my girls have watched all that. So okay. I'm very yeah. familiar with all that. And your girls are similar to my daughter's age. That was the kind of energy I got from this movie was those Disney Channel epic series. Mm -hmm. And I always found those series to be a little like overwritten, overacted, underfunded. That's a good way of putting it. I like that. And yeah. yeah, And so this like it it felt like that to me. It it felt like Elena of Avalor, like the Rapunzel Tangled series. So there were parts like that's kind of what I mean when I meant like some of the songs I felt were cringy. It just felt like that. Like some of those series shows to me were cringy when my daughter was watching them. But I always said to myself, like, "Man, eh, it's Disney Channel. Like, right. Whatever. <laughs> so it just felt right. it felt a little Disney Channel to me. The yeah. movie, the small screen versus the big screen. Like they would have they'd be right. okay having four fingers versus five. Yeah, like it felt like a movies. small screen production on a big screen at some points. Mm-hmm. Not the whole thing, but some of it. I was like, this feels very Disney Channel. Mm-hmm. OK, so now that we've gotten our non spoiler views about this film, um, you can get an idea if you haven't watched it yet. Uh, now is your time to hit pause, and before we jump into the fuller, uh, the full spoiling thing, all the details, all the stuff. So I'm giving you a chance. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, or you know if you're just not spoiled by spoilers, then feel free to continue listening on. But now is your chance to hit pause because we're about to spoil it for you right now. So now we go to the spoiler-filled section of our review. <laughs> And to break the spoilers, y'all, just like Ghostbusters 2, as I mentioned in the non-spoiler part, the singing of the citizenry of Rosas saves the day and defeats the king. Oh, Uh, that's what you mean by Ghostbusters. I was wondering. Yes, no. That's the first thing I saw. I was like, they're going to start singing like Ghostbusters 2. And if you remember Ghostbusters 2, they started singing higher and higher. Yeah. Right? Just to to defeat uh, Vigo. Vigo. (laughs) No, 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 no. They were singing Old Lang Syne. They were singing higher and higher as they watched as oh, they, walked they walked the down statue. Yeah, right, you're right, you're right, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But they were singing a song regardless to break Vigo's shell thing right. that he had around whatever. I guess it was a museum or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, that's what but you yeah, mean. yeah. The, all the citizenry, everybody in New York, you know, they're going for the, the, the good feelings of the NYC, the New Yorkers, uh-huh. to defeat Vigo. And that's exactly what happened. And somehow after their singing and their little hearts glowed, uh, you know, the star got shot out and then... I don't know how the the evil dude got sucked back into that staff. I'm assuming the star did it, but it didn't really look like it. It's like it just got no. sucked in out of no reason. I oh, because the wishes all came out. And because the wishes came out, then he got sucked into the staff? I think so. It was like a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. But it was yeah. at that same time, like as the wishes came out, he like had a chance to see the wishes getting out, and then he was sucked in. Hmm. Into an itty bitty living space. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I had definitely had those vibes. It yeah. was definitely Phantom Zone ish uh, when he <laughs> yeah. caught in the in the glass. Like it was like that. a magic mirror. Yeah, yeah. I, I realized why he got sucked back in. Okay, oh. he was wearing a cape. 
Ah, no oh, cakes. No cake. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. Cakes. College. She said no cakes. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been it. He had a cape. He had a cape. That's how he got sucked. That's Ooh. it. All right, we figure. I'm good now. I'm glad we solved that. <laughs> yes, I was. Bothered me. It so will now not eight out of ten. Right? No, it won't. <laughs> yeah, it's up to five down. Four, four and a half. Yeah, well, four and, and, and a half. half. All right. For the capes and Edna called it. But anyway, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So yes, here we are in the, the spoiler stuff. Where would we like to go next? Can we start with like the main character first? Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's, yes, absolutely. Let's talk about her because I thought the voice actress did an incredible job. I mm-hmm. thought she. Yes. She did a phenomenal job bringing that character to life. I just felt like they did a poor job writing her that typical incredibly driven but a bit awkward with a kind of hidden secret inner beauty Mm -hmm. character that we've been getting since moana and mirabelle and Mm -hmm. merida and all that it's just like no romantic interest in any guys whatsoever which haven't hung around a 13 14 year old that's all they talk about (laughs) it's funny (laughs) that in these movies nowadays none of these girls even talk about that kind of stuff whenever we have a sleepover that's all they talk about oh lord but the character just wasn't very definable. I don't. I don't think. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know anything about who she is except that she loves her family and believes in fairness. There's no backstory that I'm aware of. There's nothing that explains what happened to her father. What her wish may be that she would be uh, putting forward. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of felt like they shortchanged her a bit. As far as mm-hmm. the depth of the character, yes. Yeah, as far as the that. depth of the character, I mean, that, yeah. I, I just felt like overall, and and this will be my main complaint: the character development across the board was just awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah, to your point, the only thing I walked away knowing truly about, other than some of the stuff that you said, but the thing that stuck out in my head was the fact that she lost her dad at age twelve. Yes. How she lost her yeah. dad was never uh, said. never said. But no. that's the angst or strife that uh, well, they had to carry. She said when he was sick. Okay, so he mm-hmm. was ill. Yeah. Yeah, she said something. There was some line where she was like, well, when my dad was sick, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, at early age to lose a parent for sure. 12. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was about that was about as deep as I, I felt like I got with that one. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. I, I, I can see that for sure. Yeah. I've, I've, I, the only part I really felt for her was when the... When she realized that the grandpa, he couldn't get his wish, and then she started to see things for yeah. how they really were. Um, that was a good turning point for it. And, and again, the concept of the movie is good. It's just not how it was executed. Like, in yeah. my head, I'm like, Yo, I never saw any previews or no trailers or nothing. I think the closest I got was Danny had a magazine with the on the cover with this character on it. Oh, the G23, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I thought she was like some sort of, like, magician or something in training like that's what mm-hmm. i thought was gonna happen and she unleashed a whole bunch of magic or something in the world like that's what i thought i was going to see mm-hmm. and for a second when they were saying she was an apprentice i was like oh okay she's yeah. gonna do a little bippity boppity boo stuff or something same but, here i thought that was her maybe her goal was to be the best apprentice that she could ever be and apprentice to what like to like a magical apprentice or like to be a she, magnifico to magnifico she was, yeah, she was, she was, for that the was job. who was the king right yeah yeah right. Yeah, she was interviewing for that position. Exactly. Right. To apprentice to be a king? No, no, to, no, no. To be his helper, but again, with the idea that maybe one day she would take over, I would think. A sorcerer's apprentice. Uh-huh. Oh, well, uh-huh. okay. Now that makes sense a little bit. Yeah. If, yeah. If you're going for the. But, so I guess she wouldn't be in line to be king, or maybe to. I don't know. Maybe she would be. Or no, I, yeah, no, some kind no, of royalty. King didn't have any uh, children then. Yeah, didn't right. have any children. So yeah. that's where I thought, kind of thought the movie was going to go. And I'm like, ooh, that's intriguing. Like maybe she's going to get in and then she's going to discover something. But no, she discovers something right away. I was yes. about to say that. Exactly. That yeah, turn was very fast. Yes. yes. The villain, again, this is again my biggest problem with the villain. The villain is so unhinged and quick to show his underlying sinister nature that you can't help but question how it took the people so long to catch on to this. <laughs> like question the man on anything and he just starts snarling and hissing and <laughs> hamming it up like he's Willem Dafoe in the Green Goblin. So here's, here's, here was my kind of take on that. Mm-hmm. And you guys, you might not agree, but I sort of interpreted him as some of our like modern day politicians that mm. like, they say the quiet part out loud all the time because they are so convinced that they're correct and their way of seeing the world is correct. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're just so upfront with the things that they're doing that are probably illegal or maybe questionable or whatever. 
but they do it because they they say they're doing it for us. Well, mm-hmm. I'm doing it for the country. I'm doing it for the good of, you know, freedom or, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, that I, that's sort of how I interpreted him was as like this sort of modern day politician who's like a little narcissistic, like really believes that what he's doing is for the best of everyone, even though it's obviously for his own gain. Um, hmm. I don't know. No, that's an interesting so way of looking at it. I, yeah, I sort of felt like it made sense for him to give up those things so early because he would never question them. Like he's so, you know, he thinks he's doing the right thing. He's not trying to hide something. Like he just he thinks he's righteous and benevolent, and so he's just like telling her how it is. And then when she starts to question him, he gets threatened. Yeah, yeah. As, but the one thing that had me confused too was when the movie starts. It starts like the storybook. And then they show him, like, oh, once upon a time there was this guy. Blah, blah, blah. So they give him like this nice, beautiful intro to kind of, I guess, sell you on it. Yeah. But I got the impression that he helped to build this land as well. He did. Yeah. He did, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, hey, it's my house. You guys are living in it. You know, pay taxes. So yeah. to your point, you <laughs> might be on to something there. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What? No, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I, that's well, what I mean. No, you're like, right. He... That's, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. His motivation was to like create this space that made him the protector because he had had a bad experience. And so now he wanted to create this world that was all about his ideals. And so he was just telling her his ideals and turned out she was like, whoa, wait, what? You're going to take like all their hopes and dreams and then like you get to decide if they're valid. And he was like, heck, yeah. What are you talking about? (laughs) But kind of culty, right? He had a good point. Yeah. He had a good point. I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna go really heady, but it didn't. He, he just cut it no. because he said yeah. something like, "Well, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead." No, I was gonna say like the the grandpa had the dream. So basically, in that in that scene, both characters are completely selfish. Yeah, right. Because the king's like, right. "Hey, you want a job? Like, you can't do that in real life. Like, you can't go in and apply for a job and then tell the boss he sucks. Like, do I still get the job? No. <laughs> or ask for something right off the bat. Right. I, I thought I was like, dang. It it's like, yeah, yeah, usually it takes a, a month or two you before wait? somebody asks for He something. even said yeah. that. He, said yeah, that. Yeah, he exactly. even says that. He's like, wow, you were just right off the bat. <laughs> but she had a selfish motive for what she was yeah. doing mm-hmm. in that she was hoping to get the grandfather's wish to come true. And the grandfather's wish wasn't anything mind-blowing, and I get that. But there was a part where Magnifico says something like, um, how do I know that this doesn't incite a mob with this guy's right. wish does? And I was like, oh, well, that's an interesting point. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to see some dichotomy between the two characters. And yeah. to your point, Danny, they just cut it flat. Yeah. And that would have been a really good defining moment for the you know for the heroine here because she doesn't really have anything that really defines her as like, a, I don't do what you call her princess i don't i don't know no, she's, no, she's not a princess yeah she's not a princess yeah. but i didn't know like that she didn't even get the gig so yeah no yeah. definitely not okay right <laughs> yeah she didn't get that she couldn't yeah. even be a sorcerer she, she couldn't get that to work but that was like the first real sign of his maliciousness not, not just the mustache twirling that was going on <laughs> as he was explaining it it's like you're gonna sit there and you're gonna be my guest of honor <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that was creepy right it's like wow there again he's just so quick but you yeah. touched on something that really is okay so let's I, I was, I was kind of hoping to kind of talk about all these characters a little bit more, but let's get into what you just said because, yeah, you, you've kind of ripped open this part of it and really what bothered me the most about this movie is that the plot just was nonsensical. Totally. In the sense that, you know, it sounds cool at first. It really does. It, it sounded cool, and that's why I wanted to see the movie. But then you realize little by little that this movie isn't about wishes, the wish part is what made sense and wanted to draw me in, uh, but this isn't about that. What, what it's about, they're not handing wishes over to Magnifico. They're handing their dreams over to Magnifico. It's like, it's, to, me, to me, a wish, that's something, if you're giving it to someone else to grant, it's something that you can't accomplish yourself. Like, I wish I could fly, or I wish I was a prince, or I wish I could talk to animals, or whatever. I don't know, something right. like that. But playing the guitar, seriously, it's not that f- 
fucking hard to learn to play the guitar. He's waiting a hundred years to do something he could have figured out how to do in a couple of weeks. He should have wished for YouTube. <laughs> well, he should have gotten that. They got in the app. Exactly. <laughs> the you play app. Yeah. So once you realize that these people aren't wishing for the impossible, but rather things that are easily doable with just a modicum of effort, it makes you question the intelligence of the people of Rosas. <laughs> and and he, so here you got this guy Magnifico who builds his kingdom, allows for the people to live there rent free. It's some utopia, I suppose. But all he asks for in return is their wishes, which they willingly give to him with the understanding that they may or may not be granted. This girl thinks it's wrong, so it justifies her just taking all these things that don't belong to her. How is that a good lesson for kids? Guys, if you feel your parents are too harsh and unfair, it's totally cool to revolt and do as you wish. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was the message. Piss the but, people out. No, but I mean, it's like, how about you simply don't move the roses? <laughs> how about you don't give this guy your yeah. wish? Just seems like yeah. what it would have saved us a whole lot of time in this movie if instead of getting all pissed off at Asha for asking the question, if Magnifico just showed her an ungranted wish from one of the townspeople who, I don't know, wanted a dragon or wanted to bang his neighbor's wife or wanted to <laughs> so kill, kill the, the guy across the street because he wouldn't put his dog inside. Like something that would have shown that, yes, not all wishes could be granted because to me, Bruce Almighty handled this thing a whole lot better. When they show that, yeah, if God granted every prayer, it probably wouldn't go that well for everyone. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it went in a completely different direction than yeah. I thought I, it was going to go in. I agree that the wishes, they had a range, right? Right. Like, I think what they intended, and then they tried to say that in the writing, was that it wasn't just a simple wish. It was like your your drive, like what drives you to be like a productive, hopeful person. And so he was like taking the thing that motivates you to live and thrive mm -hmm. and survive. And so he was like taking that piece of you away and keeping it. Right. And sort of like keeping you like you, they try, I think they tried to use that friend character. I forget his name. He kind of looks like Kristoff to me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like Christoph put on like 70 pounds. Um, yeah. That's being generous. <laughs> After so, Thanksgiving. He looked like the guy from uh, Emperor's <laughs> New Groove. Oh, yeah. Kronk. No, and, not uh, Kronk. The Kronk's. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Um, um, Pancha. Yeah. Pacha. 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 But like yeah, the yeah. idea is they were saying like, hey, when when he gave his wish to Magnifico, he like no longer was an interesting or enjoyable person to be around. That like he had lost his will to mm -hmm. to he lost his spark his yeah. zest for life and there all again, spark that's what i'm saying <laughs> like wishes shouldn't be your lifelong dreams and that's what i'm saying is like if they would have just like called this movie dreams and like right. you in entrusted this guy with your life like i mean a wish should be something that you can't accomplish on your own like playing like a that's just such a a nothing well, thing. Yeah, but it look. wasn't just playing the guitar. He wanted to inspire a generation. To be a mob? That's what, that's what <laughs> yeah. I remember that was the lie he said. If you're thinking uh if you're thinking of this as being like the Dizzy One Hundred thing, a dream is a wish your heart makes. Mm -hmm. And right. if you notice yeah, that all true. goes back to like when they're singing and their hearts light up. Mm -hmm. That's how they base off dream and wish together. Okay. Right. And that's it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that, true. that's all now whether they succeeded to that point, I don't know. But that's from what from to your what the points that you're making. That's where I think they came up with that idea. Yeah, but you know what's yeah. weird. Regardless of the definition of dream or wish, right? But the choice right. therein is okay. Let me give it over to this guy and hope it gets granted, or I can just spend a couple of weeks doing this and no, because they forgot those dreams. Exactly. They, they they have no recollection of making those dreams. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. doesn't it seem to you like if you were asking somebody and you were giving it over something, it would be something that you couldn't handle yourself? And even for money, they didn't even get money. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they maybe, they, but they did get to live there rent free. I think. I like, guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's they did fair. get. And listen, what else are you wishing for besides living in a nice place rent free? But exactly. they were still broke. They were still got everything. And then and then but <laughs> then, then Magnifico, like he's like, watch me start crushing dreams and wishes and stuff and then he, he'll break the thing I, and I remember 
he, he had the song to himself, like, look what I've done for all these people. Like, that was a trippy. Oh, that's the thanks I get. Oh, that yeah, was, that's, yeah. That's, thank you. That was a trippy scene. But he starts to break stuff, and I thought the people were going to start, like, losing their color yeah, or something. Like, like, they clutched their heart and dropped dead. I didn't. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, the people just were like, I'm just really sad. Like, well, that's, that's called real life. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the idea, right? He was saying, like, that was kind of in the prologue was, if you could have the opportunity to give up your heart's desire and not worry about it, mm-hmm. and then maybe you would get it if this guy decides to just do it for you. Like, I think that's a trade off, right? So, like, you could work for something so long and so hard and you never get it. And then you feel the pain and the sadness of like not being able to achieve that really important thing. And he's saying, look, I'm going to take all that pain away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this desire from you. You're never going to worry about it again. You know, like all of us with anxiety, we are like, Ooh, this actually sounds attractive. You know, like (laughs) you don't have to worry about it. And then I'm going to decide when it's the right time. And Mm -hmm. then you can just have it. You don't even have to work. Like, I'm just going to do it for you. Yeah, the, but that's what I'm saying. It make, doesn't it make those people sound incredibly lazy? It didn't do. It didn't yeah. speak well for those people at all. Like, I didn't feel bad for them when he, me either. He started crushing their dreams. Like, I, I didn't feel <laughs> like do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, who cares? Like, nothing happened to them. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it wasn't like Horcruxes where you like you lose a piece of yourself. Exactly. Right. Like, yeah. if they had been like, oh my god, I, I'm, going, I'm reverting back to being a dinosaur or something crazy. Like, I'm like, oh no, don't let that happen. But what I also found weird was okay, so it's wish and then there's magic and okay i i get that when you say magic all bets are off mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right so the little kirby star guy he, i thought kirby too <laughs> right <laughs> that's the yeah, kirby thing it's like oh it's kirby right, yeah so i was like yeah it's kirby that would have been a better name for it. it would get you know kirby so this thing comes down okay it has all this magic to it but then why can't the orbs that have all the people's dreams or whatever be like almost like a consistent version of that type of magic. Like, could you just had a whole bunch of little Kirby's there with like other people's dreams inside the Kirby's? Because then for me, it was like, so wait, is the Kirby star thing a stronger magic than what Magnifico has? Or I would say equal? yes. Yeah. But it's like, to me, it was just an inconsistent. Magnifico was definitely threatened by that star. Yeah, which I don't see why he was, because the most that Kirby did was make fireworks. Like, nothing really happened. Oh, yeah, he made a nice little Mickey fireworks. Yeah, yeah he was sure. tiny, and he just made chickens grow large and shoot <laughs> eggs. Like, that whole scene was just well, so Well, he disturbing. could grant wishes. Yeah, but they weren't no, even... for a dude who, like, yeah. his whole shtick is granting the wishes. He doesn't want someone else coming in. But that's the end to the Yang, right? So you have the Kirby dude yeah. and you have Magnifico balancing each other out. You know, I but guess. my question is this. Okay, so they did a whole song about it, and I just didn't catch Yes, they it. did. <laughs> they, I did not catch it. They're like, but how is this possible with the star? And they do this whole song about... We are all stars, or something to that. Yeah, was that, that when yeah. she's singing with the animals? The animals yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. dozed off on some of that. Like, <laughs> I was like, this is too trippy. So, yeah. like, I'm still not quite. So, maybe y'all caught it, and y'all can explain it to me. How are we all part celestial beings? We talk to mushrooms. It's our, <laughs> our wishes, our hopes, and dreams. We all want to right? do like, something. That's why when the star was going around to all of her friends and, like, touching their faces and being sweet. And it was like, yay, love you. Like, I recognize your happiness. And then he got to that heavy Kristoff and that guy <laughs> was like Christoph. such a downer. And the star was like, oh gosh, who are you? Like, he didn't have the star in him anymore. He right. Didn't oh. have that, the, the, that he didn't have hope. that connective. Oh, because he was oh, yeah, sad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Because at the end, in the end, right? Because that's the song that they sing at the very end, right? When Magnifico is like, he's like zapping all of the whole town of Rosas, and then he's got the girl right there on the cliff, and she's looking defeated, right? That's the song that they sing at the end, right? That's the Ghostbusters two moment. Yeah, that's where they're, they're, right. they're, their hearts start to light up. Right, yeah. right, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Kind of like one. Indiana Jones. and, mm-hmm. and uh, That was the one I liked. That was the one that I think is going to be in all the fireworks shows now. Oh, I can, I oh, can, I can totally see, see that. that. Yeah. I mean, Along with people's hearts it's, going. Yeah, people, yeah, their things are It's glowing. called This Wish. This Wish. I, I saw that coming too when she started looking on the press like, yeah, there you go. They're going to sing again. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, Kevin, <laughs> I know, I know, Kevin, you're a music guy and I respect that, but that was like too much music. Like, no, was- you know, when I was watching this movie, the, the first thing that popped in my head is like, Eli's going to say, man, I, I hate musicals that just sing for <laughs> no reason. Though. Like, 
that don't lead to anything. It does. And that's yeah. yes. And, they, and it was just like it was like they started off saying like, you know, I get it. Like they introduce you to the town and it was like uh, kind of reminded me of Encanto, right? Like, you know, when they sing about, you know, the house the family Madrigal. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah. OK, I get it. I get it. Totally understand that. Mm-hmm. Sing me into your introduction. I'm totally fine with that. And then like they just kept singing though more stuff like it was like hey who are you then they would sing their names i'm like okay wait come on slow down a little bit <laughs> and then like i think uh I, I i zoned out after the first half of it and then like the second half and i don't know what the name of the song is but once everybody started to figure out that magnifico was evil and he was like no good that was the song. Is this that the I, one where the queen pops in? Yeah, the and queen they're like, pops Ooh. in. Okay, yeah. But then she starts singing. And she like, starts oh, singing. Yeah. Like, he ain't no good. Too, yeah. He ain't no good man. That was, that was called Knowing What I Know Now. Okay. okay. That was a pretty cool song. I dug that. But what helped it was that it was like, uh, you know, sometimes like in movies. 80s montage. Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> in movies, they have to like recap everything that's happened up to that point just so you're caught up to speed in the story. Like a and refresher. Just in case yes. you fell asleep. And just in case yeah. you fell asleep. <laughs> a fresher into act three. Oh, yeah. in my case, exactly. I had I had two kids that were sitting next to me that they kept getting up and getting snacks. Like, I don't know who these kids' parents were. They didn't come <laughs> with any parents, but they were living large. Like, they were getting snacks and Snickers and popcorn. At one point, uh, they had one of the, the guys come up there and serve them hot dogs and stuff. So they kept walking Ooh. past me. I'm like, come on, kids. You guys got it. <laughs> they weren't there for the movie. They were there to get food. Yeah, they yeah. had ADHD or something. Like, because they just it. kept going. I had my feet reclined up trying to listen to the song and get into it, and I, I just couldn't do it. But that <laughs> last part. was like, you're ruining my Jam. So right. I, I was so bad. If you're bored like I am, just take a nap like I do. Exactly. I'm like, I paid for this. I get it. Your parents paid for you, but uh, come on. You know, give me a break. Well, at least give me some of the Snickers, kids. Come on. I yeah. did remark to Josh, this is one of my notes. Normally, when I watch animated Disney musicals, the music part is obviously prominent, but it's not so much like a stage production. Okay. Like yeah. this was really like a stage production. Like they yeah. would even pose at the end of the song yes. and like wait yes. three counts like you would if you were doing it on a stage. And I just I felt like why are they animating this like a stage production? Like they don't have to do that. Yeah, that's okay. a very good observation. Yeah, that's a good point. And so that that threw me off a little. I just I didn't understand why it was so much like, oh, this is when the blackout would be. Okay, mm-hmm. here's the curtain. Now we're changing the seat. Like it's <laughs> yeah. weird. I was like, why? Yeah. It's animated. You don't have to do that. Well, you know, you know, I thought about that too, and to your point, I, I agree. But I think it's not because they're going for and granted they, they have been going more towards like a musical thing, but it, it's not as smooth. Because they did okay. the same. If you remember Little Mermaid Under the Sea, they did a whole posing thing at the end of Under the Sea. They did. Yeah, yeah you're right. And you're then, right. And they're like, oh, she disappeared. And all the fish just started to slowly I was gonna say, but away. The posing was was a key. Like It's like, yeah, we did it. And they come to find out she wouldn't even listen to him in any way. Right. So that made at yeah. least sense. It wasn't like they were posing. And that's my point. It, yeah. it, the, the, it was smoother transitions back. It, right. Like the transitions from dialogue to the song and vice versa were very abrupt, mm. very like, yeah. here's a musical, da 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 da, and then and I'm scene. talking, st- speak, and I'm giving dialogue, and here's a musical, da da. <laughs> and it's like, you know, when he started to sing, I was like, I turned him a dog, I was like, all right, here we go, here's another <laughs> song. Yeah, he's going to sing about it. <laughs> so was it good for you then? Because, yeah, I've already voiced. What, the music stuff? Yeah, like, were you kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want another one. Like, because I would understand that, and I might be just really biased on it. No, it, it, was, but... it was too much for me. It, was, okay. it, it, it distracted okay. uh, from, like, whatever was going on. I don't know. All right. I mean, you know, and I play a lot. I play a lot of musicals and stuff. Right. So, I mean, that, really good ones yeah. know how to disguise it yeah. really, really well. Where It's like, all of a sudden, they're starting to sing. It's like, oh, it's a song. Damn, yeah. I didn't even see this coming. Even, yeah. I was thinking about Frozen a lot because of Jennifer Lee, and she She's such an important part of those movies. And even in Frozen, it's not like that. No, no, no. Like, I don't feel, you know, it just feels more fluid. Like, we're into a song because it makes sense in this moment. Like, the character's just kind of talking, and then all of a sudden, the talking becomes vocalizations, right? And, like, this was definitely, like, talk, stop, full song, Mm -hmm. stop, more dialogue. Yeah. (laughs) It's, like, weird. Yeah. 
I no, agree. absolutely. Right. I feel like as they're going for Grammy Award nominations and winnings, they're going for merchandise that they're going to sell. So you're going to get yourself a goat. You're going to get a Kirby star. You get dolls, all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what else could they sell off of this movie. Uh, um, talking mushrooms. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> talk to mushrooms. My kids loved that goat. They really loved that oh, goat. I, yeah. I like the uh, that's Alan Tudyk. I like that goat, and he made me laugh. Yeah, Alan and Tudyk. I did, yeah, I didn't laugh at the butt jokes, but I laughed. There's one point where he first gets his voice is like. Oh, I didn't know my voice was gonna be this so. Yes. Oh. He was like, like oh. and he's like, you find out he's like only a couple of weeks old. You're yeah, like, he's wow, like, yeah, he's old. Three, fast. Three weeks. Yes. <laughs> he had one joke where they were uh, paddling back to the to Rosa's after they had to drop off the, yeah. the, the the grandparent, and he was like, oh, shark. No, I was just saying I was practicing. Yeah, I was practicing. Yeah, I, I was going to see one. Yeah, yeah. I, I and had I, a, yeah, I'm not I had being biased because he did whatever intros, but yeah, yeah. you know. But I I yeah. thought uh, the way that Alan, the decisions that Alan Tudyk made for that yeah. goat were pretty good. Really like good. That. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, I, agree. I, I don't blame him at all for any no. of this. I no. I, I, just, I think the goat was clearly meant to be the comic relief sidekick. Yeah, it's and, Eddie Murphy uh, dragon character. Yeah, he yeah. he ain't no hey hey, but I get it. Right. Well, I, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, it just it he failed to induce a single laugh from the audience. I was with. Same. It could be um, from writing. Yeah, yeah to it, your point, it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, I don't think the material was all that great for him to work with. But hey, like some of those, like for younger younger kids, those jokes are going to land great. Yeah, my kids laughed. Yeah, yeah, mine didn't. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to start off like a what did you like? So and we can go back to like we'll conclude it out. But I want to know like what you like. So I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I liked the interracial family. Mm. I thought that was cool. Um. <laughs> I, I just talked about the, this with Kevin and Eli off the air. I was like, man, this is like the third interracial family in a row between yes. Elemental, was Strange World, uh, Elemental is all about an interracial relationship. Yes. That's why I turned to them and asked them. I'm like, damn, am I racist for dating a white woman? <laughs> I feel like. Oh, I I'm, liked it. I liked it. I thought it, you know, it was unique. Okay. Um, although okay. I guess you just. It was the first time maybe it, we'd seen it in animation <laughs> as humans. Well, I think no. it's, yeah, it's no, it's definitely unique because I mean, everywhere else it's just like the, the norm, as you would t- t- to your Danny's yeah. point, yeah, is they do color stick with colors and that's about it, right? So, I liked the interracial family, I liked that she was an interracial character. I actually, I really did like the themes of the story, mm. and I, I thought that the themes were really trying to get back to this idea of what Walt Disney's dream was about, mm-hmm. right? It was about identifying magic in people. And making that magic real. And I thought that that's the theme of this was that like this this man was taking away the spark inside people Mm. that make magic happen. And so I I liked that piece of it. I thought it was really on brand for them. And I think the grandfather ends up kind of becoming the waltz at the end with Mm. the after credit scene. Okay. So I liked all of that. I thought it was it really went with the message of the Disney 100. That all made sense to me. Mm. I liked that I thought I felt like I could see Disney characters in these characters. Mm-hmm. So like for example, her really short friend reminded me of Grumpy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. He was almost animated like him. Rachel, no, and he no, had some lines the, that were similar. All, all of the, the friends, friends were the seven, were the seven dwarves. dwarves. Yeah, no, that, that, oh. that, that's a definite. There was a yeah. sneezy one, the yep. sleepy one, the dopey yep. one, the grumpy oh one, the shy. Doc, Doc was the best friend yeah, with the glasses. The smart yeah. one with the smart glasses. One, yeah. you know, the, the, one of the guys at the very end of it, with the with bashful, the, the, chick, the chicken. Yeah. Remember the chicken got huge. Yeah, and it spit the egg on him, and he and it fell on his chest. Like, no wonder I'm grumpy. He literally says it. Yeah, yeah, that one. That's the one I remember. Oh my god, I totally didn't get that. Yeah, no, that's seven dwarves. Wait, who was the girl that? disappeared that's bashful that's the bashful, bashful. got yeah. you okay the, the, oh my goodness the one i that, didn't pick that up yeah oh, man <laughs> of course, yeah the one who lost their wish that was the sleepy one yeah obviously you know yeah. the dopey one the the stoner guy yeah dopey was the one that kind of reminded me of uh, one of the guys from big hero six yeah yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, the uh, oh, I can't remember the name of that actor. Yeah, but he was a one, Deadpool. Yeah. 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 There and, was a lot of that. And I mean, the happy yeah. one, I think, was the sister. sister. Yeah. yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. 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 She was. No, a sister. Oh, oh a sister with yeah. the A. Okay. Well, yeah. I was like, she wait, was I don't remember a sister. Yeah. There's only there was only yeah. one sister in, 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 yeah. the whole, in the whole group right there. There's only one. <laughs> There's only one for me. Well, I totally missed that. I like that even better now. See, there you go. That was another Easter egg. You see, it was right there in front of you. Didn't catch it. I missed that one. I got a lot of Easter eggs, but I didn't get that one. Yeah. I thought this was the other thing I liked. I thought a lot of the pieces all connected to Disney history. And I called it was 
during the scene where she's in the woods and she thinks she's fighting Magnifico, but it's actually the friend in disguise. Yeah, that you know? was, yes, that was trippy. Um, in that scene, she's wearing a cloak that looks just like the fairy godmother's cloak. Oh, and wow. I wrote down fairy godmother's cloak as an Easter egg. And ah. then later in the movie, she becomes the fairy godmother. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Uh-huh. So I thought like, you know, is this a fairy godmother kind of origin story thing? Mm. I liked that piece of it. I liked that. Um, you know, I'm I'm a Disney fan, right? And yeah. I really like the company and I really like the message and all that stuff. So like all of those pieces fitting together for me was great. Mm. Um, and I like that song, This Wish. I um, can't wait to hear it in a fireworks show. Mm. And that's that's nice. it. That's what I liked. That's a good bit, though. Yeah. That's, that's something that's pretty poignant, actually. Man, I am really struggling. <laughs> uh, I'm oh, trying well, to think of I mean, what I like. There are elements I like, but something that I really feel like planting a flag on like yeah no this definitely you you got something Kevin? yeah go i was ahead. gonna say yeah yeah to rachel's points like yeah absolutely all the the um, that's um, what i meant by the homages yeah we we're talking about like there, there, there's so many different things from like previous they even mentioned bambi yeah one of the yeah. Yeah. Like, deers were named bambi yeah thanks for not killing you know, me and then you had like, talking bambi. mushrooms john. and all kinds yeah john, john the bear ba- it was little was, john yeah it was like, little john but it was also kind of new orleans ish so he's almost like the gator from oh, Princess Lewis? and the Frog, yeah, yeah. Lewis, he had a, like a little twinge in his yeah, accent. That. But yeah, there were so many. I mean, you have Maximo, uh, not Maximo, what, what the horse from uh, Tangled. Was oh, Maximus. 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 Yeah, uh, no, not Maximo. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, Maximus was in there. But yeah, I liked all those little homages. I thought that was cute. Once I realized it was, that's what they were, and then so I started looking for. It. They were all over the place. You mm-hmm. know, absolutely. And so I, I was like, okay, the, the Disney 100, yeah, they're going to pay homage to past animation stuff. So this is very nice. Mm-hmm. I really like the use of the purples and greens. I mentioned this mm-hmm. in the college whenever we were dealing with um, um, Magnifico. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I really I really did appreciate that. I mean, all the coloring. I, and that's one thing. Whenever he would pop up, I would just look at the backgrounds and see how they were shading things and everything. I was like, oh, this is, mm-hmm. this is nice. I, this is really enjoyable. I like the goat. I like Alan, Alan Tudyk's goat. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I mentioned Valentino. That. Yeah, Valentino. His <laughs> name Valentino. I, I'm waiting for shorts coming out. Valentino on D- Disney Plus. <laughs> I'm sure goat goat shorts or something like that. I, there, there's something about the Kirby star which kind of made me happy, mm-hmm. but it was, worried me because like, are they trying to pass him off as Tinkerbell? Because <laughs> 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 toward at the end, he's doing the same kind of stuff that Tinkerbell would normally do. Yes. Yeah, even though Wendy and Peter show up at the end. Yeah, and, yeah, and, Peter, and, yeah Peter. Yeah, Peter. Peter was there, and yeah. Wendy and, and your boy got them together. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think th- that's about it as far as uh, things that I actually liked. In a movie, and it, they're nothing really, really deep. You know, one of my favorite Disney songs is "When You Wish Upon a Star." Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I like that. Oh, especially the end scene where they incorporate that. Yeah, I, I love that. That get, yeah, that's another thing. That I like the cute. guitar version of that. And they yeah. incorporated into that with the whole castle thing. But you know, Jiminy still did a pretty killer job over that. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think yeah, that was really well encompassed by a cricket long, long time ago. Yeah, but anyway, it was it was a good track. I interpreted that end scene as. Um, the grandfather as Walt that he that his dream was to inspire a generation with his art and that that's what Walt has done that he's inspired a generation with his art yeah no that, that I think that's a great observation yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get as much feels from that as no. I did with that uh, what was that collaboration thing they had on D plus where like Mickey stops in front of a picture mm-hmm. of Walt and he just kind of looks at him with yeah. a sad face that got me yeah <laughs> Yeah, and that got me more so than this. I just really dug the version, the guitar version that they had of yeah, no, when the whole, on a star. Yeah. The whole time I'm just sitting there looking at the grandpa like, "You fool! Just pick up a guitar, play it. <laughs> it's not that hard. Teach yourself." Yeah, yeah. No. yeah just the way that they panned out and then mm. like came around to the Disney credit scene, mm-hmm. like while that song was still playing. Yeah. that's what made me think like, "Oh, it's it's Disney. It's this idea of inspiring a generation with your dream." Mm-hmm. I, I would I would definitely say that. Outside of the callbacks, like Kevin mentioned, which was which was cute, I really did like Magnifico. I, I think he was like one of my favorites. Uh, toward, again, towards the end, where they would have all of the effects that he would use, and he was pretty much the most animated one. So he was he was pretty cool. He's a fun character. I just wish I like that. I feel like they went back to a classic villain. I liked that. I I agree with you. Yeah, I think they. To be honest, I think they tried to make him like. Ernesto De La Cruz. That's just my own personal opinion. Cause mm-hmm. I, yeah, I he had yeah. a similar. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he has the good guy look and they 
because you remember, you remember Coco, they do that same kind of thing where they kind of give him like a history, and then he's like, yeah. oh, look, he's a good guy. And the next thing you know, boom, they swerve into yeah. him going crazy. But I can relate to that guy towards the end. Like, uh, I, I just I just can relate to that. Like, hey, look, I'm trying to keep all this stuff together and nobody cares. And so I'm, I just I've had it. So I, I like that. I also thought it was good. Uh, like I said, they had enough characters to keep you engaged. Uh, talking mushrooms to me, that should be a toy in itself. That was a trip. <laughs> yeah, yes. That, that was a that was a trip. I don't know. But what the little her. mushroom was always the one that said all the stuff. Yeah, it's just a little. But they did really you good see? with that. I don't know why that stuck out to me because, like, the, yeah, like you said, the little one, it just had his mouth. They didn't try to go over the top and give it eyes and eyebrows. Oh no, they it went just, Fantasia with it for sure. Yeah, so. I always thought that was trippy whenever they were in the forest, you know, talking mm-hmm. bears, talking deers, a hundred rabbits popping up. So it had like, yes. it had cute it had cute moments to it that uh, I liked. Like again, uh that one song once they figured out that Difficult is the bad guy. I yeah. dug I dug that. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, there's visually look, I know the style of it wasn't what I was used to. And I think we kind of talked about this earlier. To figure it, out why, yeah. It just depended yeah. on what the shot was. So for me, when it, when they did the part where they released all of the orbs and they caught little Kirby in there and stuff <laughs> like that, and then like you know, Magnifico, like he he shoots the staff and he he's got them all blocked. The Kirby can't get out. He's pushing them like. That whole scene was like, okay, there you go. Special effects. You're an animation studio. Do special effects. That's all I need. But for the most part, anything else that they had when it took place at night, it was always kind of hard to see. But if that's the style that they went for and it wasn't something that was unfinished, cool. But uh, overall, yeah, it had a, a good look to it. And even the main character... They didn't develop her too well, like we've already talked about. Yeah. But she had a cool look, you know, like she was very detailed with freckles. If she said something that was weird, it was, I remember there was one part where she was just known for not really making things happen amongst her group of seven dwarfs mm-hmm. or seven friends. And she would do these smirks and stuff like that. So they were very expressionate mm-hmm. with that. So, yeah, I think there's a lot they could build on uh, with that. But got to try again, baby. Try <laughs> oh, again. yeah. Oh, you know, there's one thing I forgot toward the end, and when they were doing like the little sparkles in the past movies and stuff, mm-hmm. I appreciate them putting Pocahontas in there mm. and including that. But you know, because you know, there's a lot of well, controversy they did them all. They, they had they them all. Yeah, 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 they had a whole bunch, which is yeah. great. Uh, oh, in the thankful. end credits, yeah. I was like, "Where is Pocahontas in that movie?" Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was blowing my daughter's mind at first because I was calling who was going to be next. She's like, "How are you doing that?" And I'm like, "It's in chronological order, baby." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you should be like, mm, mm. <laughs> Peter Pan. Yes, Lutz, that's Lutz. funny. Yeah, but I appreciate uh, them including her in, yeah. as part of that lineage. I feel like I don't trust myself with any of those Easter eggs now because I didn't get the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, I'm like, oh wait, there's probably oh. all this stuff that's in there that I didn't even like pick up on. But that you, was, I can't believe I missed that. You just saw it. You probably just need a minute to marinate on it, and then yeah, once you yeah. do well, it, well, I like, got the grumpy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. they went out of their way. Yeah, on that one to to, to really hammer it home with that. But um, yeah. Yeah, it was like because yeah, he was just, short of like semi grumpy slash anger from like uh, whatever the movie was Inside Out. Inside Out. Oh yeah, 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 Inside Out. Oh boy, Inside Out too. How about that? Mm, yeah. You know, I'm, I will just say this, okay? Because I'm listening and I just I'm trying to be a thousand percent honest here. And where y'all make good points, are, I I always see the negative in there as well because I I don't see anything purely purely positive except for one thing. And that was the intent of this movie. I really enjoyed yeah. the intent of this movie. You could see what they were trying to do. And I applaud the effort for what they did, tried to do. Do I think that they got there? No. Am I happy that they took a swing? Absolutely. Yeah. It wasn't a sequel. There you go. It definitely There's wasn't a sequel, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I'll, and, it was and, an original story. It wasn't an origin story. It wasn't a sequel. wasn't a prequel. None of that. Yeah, it had it, again the concept. I guess that's another good point. The concept is good. Like when you hear here's somebody that's you know harvesting wishes and stuff is happening with wishes. Good. You just need a genie in there. That, that, that fixed all of that right up. So. And to go back to what you were saying about the seven dwarfs characters, I mean, it's it's no wonder that you didn't catch on to that at first, just because. They really didn't resonate all that well. There was just too many of them. Like, I get it as a homage, but a homage generally doesn't last the entire f- 
fucking movie. And all yeah. they had to do was like start singing high ho high. Right. I mean, the one note joke. Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah, it just kind of runs stale pretty quickly because they're all pretty shallow and one dimensional. Uh, none of them have the charm of the Seven Dwarfs, so I could see how that. I mean, hell, I've seen horror movies where the characters are more fleshed out than this. Yeah, yeah you get the the final girl, whatever, and the rest of this day they're up the body count, and they're based on personality quirks. And that's what these guys were—they were just characters based on personality quirks. And, you, and it didn't yeah. resonate so well. And you know, to your to Charles' point with all that, it's um, yeah, I I feel I hear your point about the intent of the movie, and. and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking there's some non-artist executive that made some of those calls mm -hmm. on what you should do. So right. I felt like maybe the artist, again, and I've mentioned this in other reviews, it's like I felt like sometimes maybe the artist uh, were restricted to a certain point. Maybe, oh, there was Maybe definitely. things that were budgeted out <laughs> well, and kind of stuff that kind of limited from actually realizing the full story, which might have affected things. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you see that. And it's not to say the artist shouldn't have boundaries. And sometimes you know, when we're on a time crunch, the best things pop out. But at the same time, it's like, you know, if you squash it so much but with certain decision making, it's hard to get the full realized story. I'd be curious what hit the cutting room floor. But you can't. Well, you're right. You can't make yeah. a cookie cutter example with a movie. Like, you know, what I mean, it hits yeah. all the yeah. it checks all the boxes again. Right. But it still doesn't feel like a Disney movie. It still has to be able to go outside. Of it. And if it is an executive decision, like. Make sure the character's diverse. Make sure there's a talking animal. Make sure there's sidekicks. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's magic. It's got to have that. It's a success. We're rich. Well, uh, Put it out. And don't forget diversity and inclusion. Yes. Because uh, all you have to do is look no further than the, the, the Seven Dwarves, and you can really see why South Park into the Pandaverse <laughs> did what they did with Disney because, man, those characters were a diverse group of people. You had the... Asian handicapped was she like she had a disability of some sort because she needed a crutch to walk with correct I don't remember which one was that it was like an Asian uh, I don't remember friend. I don't remember either don't yeah. remember one of their names the they're all like I said yeah. none of them resonated the baker there was a person um, yeah the baker she's right right the made baker. the cookies yes. right she had a crutch I think that she walked with and yeah. you, oh, you had the uh, person of smaller stature I guess I don't mm -hmm. know what you with with the Little politically person. correct term, but I I don't, I'm not even touching that one. Sorry. You had a black woman. Uh, the Hispanic man was the sneezy one, right? Yeah, he I, was. The, no, he was the grumpy one. No, no, no. There was a one with the allergies. Well, the, maybe the, anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Point being is that if they could have just added an Eskimo lesbian Jehovah's Witness, they would have completely checked off hitting every category that you could possibly get in terms of hitting that diversity and inclusion mark. And you could just tell it's just so obvious what they're trying to pull there. Whereas, <laughs> and and the, that's the only reason I can think of keeping these characters in there for the entire movie. It's like it was a one note joke. Here's a tribute to the seven dwarves. Move on. This movie couldn't sustain seven other characters. <laughs> no, it, it, All you needed was like one or two good friends that you could really flesh out, and I bet you we'd remember their names. But we don't even remember right. any of these people's names. If they did magic, though, that would have really have helped. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody does magic except for Kirby to stop. <laughs> oh, and her when she had her little wand and stuff. For Kirby. Yeah, I didn't pick up on the stuff that came from the South Park movie at all. Oh my god, oh, there wasn't. Inclusion? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew it was there, but it was like wasn't something. I was like, oh, this is a big deal because it was an attempt to have an original story that wasn't making like I'm talking referring back to the Snow White thing where they're making that mm -hmm. into in, into like a more diverse situation. But at least this was kind of like they 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 hinted at it, but they didn't say, yeah, this is representing them. Oh yeah, it's just it, these are just a bunch of different people that moved to this land. Because this king uh, portrayed a, uh, a better world for them. Go look so at people, the yeah. go look at the photos uh, that were leaked from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs remake that they're doing, or not. Let's just call it the Snow White remake they're doing, and look at the pictures of of, of the friends. Tell me the friggin' difference. Oh, I remember. They're that. all yeah. diverse and ethnically, you know, which is great. It's, yeah. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say great. I think it's great. But it doesn't stick to what he said. Is no, yeah, I think yeah, you're missing the point. It doesn't it's, stick to the. It's the not traditional storytelling. Story. It's just now done. It's for the sake sacrificing of being good storytelling because the movie couldn't support seven characters because none of us even remember their names. Yeah, but so they, then it doesn't really matter what color you were if they weren't even that important. Well, that no, more. no, no. Be, okay, you're missing yeah. this. No, okay, I'm, I'm, me, I'm missing me. it because I'm, you know, slow down. He gonna break it for you. Yes, you needed to get all seven different types. So they just use there. that as a vehicle, right? To get Instead that in of there, getting yeah. one or two good characters and pick a color, who cares? I think that's what they did. No, diversity <laughs> and inclusion is coming before storytelling. Yes. It's like we need all these as opposed to having one or two good friends whose names we would remember, whose characters would resonate, right. who would be endeared to us. Instead, they're like, 
No, we can get a Hindu woman and an Asian woman. We can, and it seems like they're counting cards. It so if they had, so if they only had two friends that had like were different colors, that would have been fine. I don't care what the hell color the friends are. It's, it has nothing to do with the color. It's the intent. I think. Yeah, I think. I think the other point is though to that is that you can still have characters that are diverse in in inclusion, whatever, you, however you want to put it. But you you make enough movies that you can spread it out. And have it to where you can still have a solid story, and the character can be black or Asian or short or whatever. Right. But you're gonna make another movie, and that person can be a, of a different ethnicity. But as long as it's still written well, or as long as there's something, you have to care about the character, right? And we are we still in the phase where we talk about the good stuff? Because this, I want to say, this is a good thing, but it just doesn't happen. I think we've moved out. All right. Yeah. No. Out. We're, we're just on. making sure. Yeah. In other words, it's just diversity and yeah. inclusion at the expense of good storytelling. Right. And if and if and but that's, that's my point. It's like if they had only two. Well, I think they. Yes, we would and remember, they and, and they would and they were better developed. It, then yes. it wouldn't matter what color they were. Oh, not at all. Right. So you could have had like one of each and them in fun. Right. right. And that would have been great storytelling because then we would know who these characters are. Right. We would remember their names. Right. Rachel may have even picked up on the fact that they were dwarves. Like, <laughs> because we didn't know because they were yeah. all spread all over the place and you didn't know who was who. And that's what I'm saying. For the roles that these guys played, two good friends that were really fleshed out and made awesome characters would have been great. The only reason to keep these guys going outside of a one little note nod to the seven dwarfs is to keep the diversity and inclusion going as opposed to good storytelling. Yeah. I think the note, I think the nod to the dwarves now that you're, now that you pointed it out to me is probably what motivated that many of the characters. Oh, that's definitely. Yeah. But like I said, I they, think that has less to do with them trying to. I think it was convenient for them to get different types of people in there. But it seems to me like they were probably more motivated by the dwarf tie in and the Snow White movie tie in than they were by diversity. Oh, sure. But like I said, like at the end, you see Wendy and Peter Pan, but they weren't throughout the entire movie. Right. The dwarves were. Yeah. There's a reason they kept them around. Right. And that's the only reason I can think of. So I would ask this uh, last thing I know we're about to wrap up soon. So does this movie have enough core to it that if they made a sequel, does it entice you to go ahead and see it? Ooh. Um, my daughter brought up this idea of the sequel because, you know, they've grown up in the age of sequels, so they feel like everything is going to have a sequel. I think that they will not do one. I think that this was a one-off for the Disney 100. I think it's intended to be kind of a capstone piece to their, their company's mission. And I, I don't think that they would have any intentions of doing another story in this world. And maybe I, maybe I will be proven wrong. I guess what I would say is I don't think I would go see it because I think this wasn't intended to be that big of a story. It was intended to say something about the company and the mm -hmm. mission and the history. And that was it. Yeah, but it blows up and they make a sequel called, you know, Asha and, and Kirby take over Rosa. <laughs> do, you, do you, do you watch it? You know, do you do you see this? Is yeah. there enough there? I just don't. That? I don't think it will. I I just I don't, don't think, think there's enough there. Yeah, I think yeah. it's an intriguing concept that I would like to see because I, I like I said this fell short to me. Like I felt like I could have when I saw what this movie was about. I felt like I kind of envisioned a better movie in my head mm -hmm. than when I got. So I think there's something there. It just depends on where they would take it next. Yeah, I was gonna say like if they if they have a sequel, I would be curious. Because then they've gotten all of this weird stuff out of the way. Mm -hmm. And usually in, in Hollywood, right, once they do the... They never figure the first time they do something, it's going to work. And whether it's television or movies, they're like, oh, wait, they're going to shut this down. But if it gets greenlit, they're like, holy crap, great. We don't have to explain all that stuff again. And yes, this would have a cooler concept that if given a sequel and they don't have to put all of this other stuff in it, and we could just focus on these two characters... I think you would have something there. But it would definitely need to have an expansion yeah. Yeah. to it. I would like to see I would like to see this concept executed a little bit better. However, I would say that again, one of the things that build that, that brings me into movies like this is the world building. Mm. And Rosas the island or kingdom you or whatever you want to yeah. call it. <laughs> you don't want to visit that. <laughs> it just yeah, that was, I, that was my spin, mind yeah. as to what it would be was going to be a much more magical and like if you've got people that are there and all these wishes have been granted up until this point you would think there'd be some pretty amazing things going on in this 
in his kingdom. Yeah. But there really isn't. <laughs> no, it was, it was quick. Well, he only allowed the boring ones to come true. Right. The less threatening ones or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. That yeah. doesn't help much for uh, improving people. Like, yeah. I, I want to be a seamstress. <laughs> there you go. Your dream is grand. Yeah, I tell you I, I tell you what. I, I w- if the sequel will come out, I wouldn't pay the movie theater prices. No? To see it. No. I, I, this would be like a wait till D+. Plus. D plus sequel, yeah. If anything, okay. You know, I, I has more chance of becoming like a TV series. Well, the, the Adventures of Asha and Kirby. It Star, definitely could do that, and it does like, like what they did with the Tangled thing. But yeah, I, I, don't, nah. I don't know, but I don't see them doing a sequel. Yeah, they'd have to refigure. They'd have to get rid of the seven qu- the dwarf characters. Those those guys were useless, and it would really become around Asha, the goat. The star because the star works fine because it's it's silent or whatever. Although they yeah. said the star was going to go back, and then kind of see what her life as a fairy godmother is, and kind of seeing what she's dealing with. Right, like, I, I could see that. Yes. But and now maybe Rosas has become the more magical place that I was kind of hoping it was when it started because then all these things have come to life. Right. Yeah. That's true. All right. Yeah. So those were some of our thoughts, both spo- uh, non-spoiler and spoiler filled. We're curious to know what you guys think about this movie. And maybe some of the answers to some of the questions that we had posed. And we want you to get in touch with us to let us know those things. And we're about to tell you how to do that in just a little bit. Well, y'all, we hope you enjoyed that discussion about Disney's Wish movie. Look, if you want to learn more about us, the Magic Our Way podcast, magicourway.com is the way to go. There you'll find our social media links, past episodes, and more. Also, if you want to get in touch with us to share your opinions about this movie or any answer any of the questions that we had posed during this episode, you could do it through the following ways. Number one, shoot us an email at show at magicarway.com or call or text us at 1-815-MOWEEKEN. That is 1-815-MOWEEKEN. 669-4226. And of course, we have a couple people do things outside of the podcast. First of all, we got Eli does things with comics. What's up, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, as always, you can uh, visit my website, ivorycomics.com, where you see all the work that I have, uh, fully colored pages. The only ad for them is the Magic Highway podcast. So that's including Project Geisha, Savages, and the Molly Be Damned. There's also uh, blogs and uh, interviews and clips. And, of course, there's a link to this podcast so you never miss a beat. Never miss an episode, never miss a trip report, never miss a movie review, never miss an insight, all that good stuff. That's how Synergy works. That's how we do it over here. So, yes, please support the Indies, IvyComics.com. You can also find me on social media, Facebook. I'm right there, Eli H. Ivy. As long as you're a real person, love you to meet you. If you're a bot, uh, just get on out of here. I don't need to greet you. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Mm. Ever since I've said that, more bots keep showing up. It's just oh no! It's just it's <laughs> nuts. It's absolutely nuts. I did to make that one bot for you for the for preparation oh, the for one five hundred. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe she told all her friends to show up and start asking me to add them as friends <laughs> oh. because it's 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 insane. I mean, <laughs> really, like I'd be like, man, if these people were real, I'd be like Hugh Hefner. It'd be, it's, it's insane. <laughs> it's totally insane. But that's okay. Your bot ranch. Yeah, <laughs> got a bot ranch going on. Yeah, you know, Kirby shows up. It's it's great. Um, <laughs> Also, if you go on Facebook, you can see the Project Geisha fan page on Facebook.com slash Project Geisha. Instagram, I'm right there posting up the hearts and the likes and the sharing the stories and all that glory. You have 504 is where you find me there. And of course, on X, I just never get tired of saying that. Just X. X, X go give it to you. <laughs> what? Uh, I can be found at Hancock10166. So if you appreciate the madness, then you're just bringing me to Gladys. Thank you very much. And if you want to book a vacation to your local movie theater so you too can see Wish, yeah. you could do it with Rachel. Rachel, tell them how to do this. It's true. I can book you to go almost anywhere, even maybe around the corner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, especially can help with trips a little bit farther away, maybe a little bit outside your planning comfort zone. I plan trips to Walt Disney World, Universal, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, Virgin Voyages, uh, major hotel brands. There's so much that I can help you book. So please reach out, even if you don't want me super involved, just a little bit maybe. But what you really want is for a part of your vacation to come back and support this fan community. Give me a call then too. I can help as much or as little as you like. And again, it's at no extra cost to you. And part of your vacation comes back and supports the Magic Our Way podcast. You can find me at Rachel. R-A-C-H-E-L at magicourway.com 
or you can also find me on social media. I am on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and YouTube. And my handle is at R, the letter R, family magic, all one word. And you could even call or text me if that's easier for you. I try to make it easy. And that number that you can find me at is 978-432-WISH. Like the movie Wish. Coincidentally enough. Wish. Oh. Nice. Very appropriate for this episode. So yeah, please reach out. I would be honored to help your family plan a magical vacation. You know, it's funny when you're about to say Royal Caribbean, I thought you were going to say Rosas. Rosas. <laughs> 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 Although I don't know what the tourism is like right at the moment. Oh, kind of contentious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They're, wor- they're working on it. They're working on it. Ouch. It's kind of like New Orleans, actually. So look, y'all, if you want to access all the info we just mentioned, go to magicarway.com forward slash about us. Also, if you want to elevate your support of us, the Magic Our Way podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash magic our way. There you'll find six awesome tiers to support this show. Any way in which you can support the show is deeply appreciated. We also want to thank you for being a loyal listener. Thank you for sticking with us for 501 shows now, plus sticking with us for 11 years. How about that? Wow. Nice. Thanksgiving weekend where our birthday was back on the 24th, 22nd. I can't remember. It's a 20 something. It was early 20s for sure. But yeah, we reached our 11th anniversary. So congrats to you guys. Yeah. Well. Wait till we get to our yeah. terrible teens. Hell, man. <laughs> it's over. I think we're bad now. Yeah. And look, man, we always love hearing from our listeners, man. And forever, from day one, we always had this thing that all opinions are always welcome on this show. So make sure you get in touch with us today. So my weekends, we say Quaharini. My name is Kevin. And I'm Danny. Magic out. And you are. Bye.